PKPD Associates, experts in pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic training for students, industry professionals, and other interested individuals. Hello, my name is Nathan Tuscher from PKPD Associates, and this is a practical guide to calculating AUC, or area under the curve. The outline for this lecture will include a definition of AUC, the different flavors or forms of AUC, and methods for calculating area under the curve. AUC is the area under the concentration time curve and is a measure of the total systemic exposure of a drug over time. It can be calculated from the concentration time data. However, it is not a primary PK parameter. It is derived from clearance and dose, making it a secondary parameter. The AUC can be visualized as the area between the concentration time curve, shown in red, and the x-axis. Because AUC is a secondary PK parameter, it can be calculated exactly from the primary PK parameters, or it can be estimated using concentration time data. Some common AUC estimates include the exact AUC, AUC 0 to T, or AUC 0 to last, AUC all, and AUC 0 to infinity. Each of these estimates describe, in part, the total exposure of the drug. Let's start with the exact calculation. We start with the relationship that AUC is equal to the integral of the concentration time curve from time zero to infinity. Assuming IV administration, we can represent the concentration time curve with the equation dose over volume times the exponential minus clearance over volume times the time. Substituting this equation into the integral and pulling out the constants, we arrive at dose over volume times the integral of the exponential. This is a solvable integral and can be represented by 1 over the quantity clearance over volume. This then simplifies to dose over clearance as the area under the curve. This equation is very simple and very useful to know. But what do we do if we don't have an exact solution for the concentration time curve? In this case, we use numerical estimation methods the area under the curve can be estimated by a discrete set of blocks that we set up under the curve. As you can see, each rectangle represents an approximation of the area for that interval. Some approximations are better than others. These rectangles are equivalent to trapezoids, which extend linearly between concentration observations. To then estimate the area under the curve, we follow a two-step process. We calculate the area of each trapezoid, and then we sum all trapezoids together to get the AUC. To calculate the area of each trapezoid, we can use these equations. The area is equal to the average of the two concentrations times the time interval. This is called the linear trapezoidal method. As you can see, the linear trapezoidal method does not always accurately capture the AUC. Thus, the logarithmic trapezoidal method was developed using a log linear average of the two concentrations times the time interval to estimate the area. Let's look at a simple example of how to calculate AUC. As you can see here in this Excel spreadsheet, we have a column of data which includes the time and then includes the concentration. I then take the sum of the two concentrations and then the time interval and then we can calculate the fractional area under the curve by summing by taking the sum dividing by 2 and then multiplying by the delta t that gives us the a the linear AUC estimate for that interval from 0 to 1 hours we can do that for each discrete interval then we can sum the intervals together to get a total area under the curve of 1,257.79335. That would represent the area under the curve using the linear trapezoidal method of this PK concentration curve. We can also use a logarithmic method. As I'll explain a little bit later, the logarithmic method is only effective when concentrations are decreasing. So from the peak down to the end, we can use a logarithmic method. From the zero point to the peak, we can only use the linear method. In this one, 
we ha have the same AUC, the linear AUC, for the first four data points, and then we use the logarithmic method for the remainder. In that, we subtract C2 from C1, and then we have the log of C1 minus the log of T C2. We divide the first number by the second number, multiply it by the time interval to get the area of the A AUC for that interval. Again, summing those together, we can get a total area under the curve of 1,225.0615. If you'll remember, with the linear method, we got 1,258. The logarithmic method, we get 1,225. The linear method slightly overestimates the area under the curve. That's why the logarithmic method is sometimes used, sometimes used for decreasing concentrations. Since there are two estimation methods, it is often asked when to use each method. There are many complicated algorithms that have been developed to help answer this question. However, in my mind, it probably doesn't make too much difference. These are estimates only, so as long as you are consistent, the interpretation will not change very much. The Office of Generic Drugs at the FDA prefers the linear method, so you should use it on all generic drug studies. The linear method should be used when concentrations are increasing over time or when they are decreasing in polyexponential fashion. Overall, the linear method is the most commonly used method. The logarithmic method is slightly more accurate when concentrations are declining in monoexponential fashion. This is because this method uses log linear instead of linear interpolation in the calculation. This method is particularly accurate at the end of a curve when the time difference between data points is very large. Now that you know how to calculate AUC, let's review the definitions. AUC 0 to t, or AUC 0 to last, is the AUC calculated from time 0 to the time of the last observed concentration measurement. All samples below the limit of quantitation at the end of the curve are ignored. AUC all is similar, but extends to the last sampling point, not just the last observed concentration. This means that terminal time points with measurements below the limit of quantitation must be replaced with another value. Common replacements are zero and one-half the limit of quantitation. Finally, AUC zero to infinity is the sum of AUC zero to t and AUC T to infinity. Assuming constant clearance and low drug levels at the end of the concentration time curve, the AUC T to infinity is calculated as C last divided by the terminal elimination rate constant. Also, AUC zero to infinity is also known as the exact AUC when the concentration time equation is known and solvable. In summary, AUC is a measure of total drug exposure and can be calculated exactly if we have the equation, or it can be estimated from the concentration time data. We reviewed how to calculate AUC areas and then described the different AUC values that are commonly requested in pharmaceutical development. For more training videos, please visit us at www.learnpkpd.com.